Yay, we have indeed broken the cat drought. And right up until two seconds ago, we had this beautiful picture of two male lions looking straight into the camera with their manes sort of a glow around their heads with the sun behind them. They've both gone back to sleep now. They're fast asleep. Of course, I was thinking about guessing which two they were, but I think my guess was absolutely, in fact, I know my guess was absolutely spot on. We've got Mfumo and Tinio. Mfumo on the right and Tinio on the left. And it's always wonderful to catch up with them once again. So for our new viewers, this is two members of a four-member strong dominant male lion coalition known as the Birmingham Boys. And these are the two that we actually probably see the most regularly around here. And that's Tinio off to the left, who I have to say is looking particularly hungry. If you have a look at the curve of his belly, you can see his hip bones are sticking out just a little bit. They are, it looks as though he could use a good meal. And he definitely looks as though he could use a buffalo or two. And they've been around, judging by the tracks. But there we go. Finally, some male lions for us to sit with. This is the first time I've seen lions since I've got back from leave. I'm happy. I missed out completely on the hunt yesterday, on quarantine clearings. Although it does make me feel a little bit better that those lionesses probably watched us wander around that dam all afternoon yesterday on the sunset safari. So there's Mfumo looking across at one of the other vehicles. Now, Mfumo, of course, is the one that seems to, for whatever reason, acquire the most facial injuries. It's just something that seems to happen. And hopefully at some point he's going to lift his head and look in our direction. And you can have a look. He's looking seriously, he's looking perfectly healthy. A little bit hungry, but perfectly healthy, but very, very battle-scarred. He's got a huge scar underneath his eye from that open injury that we saw months ago. And I have to say, scarred male lions always are always incredible to look at because you know that each and every scar tells a story, a different story. A story of a fight over a female, a story of a fight over food, or a story of a fight with other male lions. Yes, is it getting very hot there, my boy? Hey, Tino. Yes, you look like you could use a buffalo or two. I have not seen these boys look this hungry in a long, long time. Here he goes, off to the shade. And very shortly, I imagine Mfumo is going to follow. And he's going to flop down there. Perfect. And down again. And there's beautiful Mfumo with his scar underneath his eye. Doesn't he look intimidating now? Not that he didn't always, but their, <laughs> their manes have filled out. Oh, big scratch behind the ear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm chuckling at one of the other guides across the way who's taking our picture with the lion, which should be awesome to see later. Here we go. Good clean, generally speaking. When any of our big cats do this, when they lift up their heads and start to preen, cleaning their chest and their paws and giving us a couple of big yawns, that means he's getting up. Although I could have told you that regardless, because the sun is now baking hot and the two of them have been lying warming up. Hello, boy. Even though we know these lions so well and we're so comfortable with them, there is always something riveting about the stare of those yellow eyes straight into yours. I actually haven't been on top of where the various Birmingham boys have been moving about, obviously having just come back from leave. I'm still trying to get an idea of where all of the anim animals have been. Wherever these two have been, it has not been on a buffalo carcass because they are very hungry. And that actually bodes well for us this evening on the sunset safari, because these boys are going to go hunt. Now there's of course this common misconception that a male lion is very lazy. And you see, he's looking, he's still, he's looking for potential food. That's what's got their heads up the whole time. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Big yawn? No, half a yawn. I've just touched upon the fact, before we go into male lions and their hunting abilities, and just touched upon the fact that as we stare into his yellow eyes, Lara, you want to know if the eye contact makes a difference, if the animals respond differently to eye contact between, oh, another big yawn, uh, between us and them, and if we should avoid looking them in the eye. Eye contact does make a difference, but particularly when you are on foot, that is where eye contact is most essential and actually it's very important if you are in a situation where you're trying to stare down a lion, let's say you have bumped them on foot and they're now very cross with you, you've got to look straight into their eyes. I found that that tends to work very well in terms of intimidating them and if, if you happen to have eye contact with them in the vehicle, it's not too much of a problem. They're not going to respond differently, they're not going to attack us. They are just going to look at us briefly and then carry on with their day. It also depends, of course, on which school of thought you subscribe to. If you think that they see the vehicle as a whole, as a unit, or if you think that they realize there are individual people on it. Personally, I think they realize that there are individual people on the vehicles. They're just not particularly disturbed by that fact because they've got used to us. There's one animal that, in my experience, when you're on foot, Unless you are being charged by it, it actually pays to avoid eye contact and, and pretend that you haven't seen it. And that's a leopard. Because a lot of the time a leopard will go completely flat and hide away in the hope that you haven't seen it. And if you happen to stumble upon it and you get really very close to it, you could find yourself in quite a tricky situation. And there I found that averting your eyes, because I have done it a few times in the past, averting your eyes and pretending that you haven't seen that animal sometimes works wonders. The same goes for buffalo in my experience as well. If you're walking past a buffalo and you've, you've bumped into it and all of a sudden you've seen it at the last minute, I find it actually works to just keep walking. In the, as long as you're not walking at it. If you're walking past it, just keep walking. Don't even look at it. Because as soon as you turn, remember that animals are geared towards the shape of the face and the position of the eyes. They are looking for nuances in facial expression. So as soon as you turn your body language to face an animal, they know that you've seen it and you know, they know that you've focused on it. And since they see us as predators, that could provoke a different response. But for the most part, eye contact while we're in the vehicle is not a problem. Oh, as our hungry lions decide whether or not they're going to hunt or perhaps just lie in the shade, probably the latter, I think James has found something that would make these lions very happy. <laughs> 